Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video. So in the last few weeks, I've had some questions about what video camera equipment I use both in the studio and while out on the trail. So in this video, I'm gonna kind of give you a rundown of just everything that I use and I think you might be surprised. Stay tuned. Okay, so just jumping right into it. First, we'll talk about the items I use when I'm out on my adventures, out on the trail, uh, out on the multi-day adventures that we do. And uh, it, it's, it's pretty basic, honestly. Um, first of all, the first thing that I wanna talk about is uh, the my helmet camera. I use the GoPro 8 mainly because the stability is phenomenal. If you've watched any of my ride videos, you know that the, the footage there is just awesome. So I really like the GoPro 8. There's, it's it's kind of quirky. They do have a few, there is a few things that I don't necessarily like about it, but the benefits of the uh, stabilization definitely outweigh the negatives. One of the negatives that I'd like to talk to you about really quick is battery life. So the GoPro 8 is definitely better than what the 7 was, but when I go on a multi-day trip or even just a day ride, um, I bring this many batteries because the battery life on the GoPro is just not that great. Now, will I go through all of these batteries? No, I usually go through five or six, but depending on how much I'm shooting, this is what I use. I, I, I use a lot of these batteries. Um, the GoPro batteries themselves I've found do last a little bit longer than some of the aftermarket batteries, but ones like this Telson battery, this one does pretty well. Mibote or however you pronounce that, these are okay, but huh, that rhymed. But I'll leave a description, I'll, I will leave a link in the description down below for all of the, the items that I, that I show you here. But batteries are the number one thing that I say, if you're gonna run a GoPro, bring extra batteries because they do seem to just eat batteries like crazy. So the next thing I use is a GoPro 7. So again, really good stabilization on the GoPro 7 as well. Um, I actually run two GoPro 7s. I usually run one on the back of the bike facing towards the back if, so my riding buddy can also get some footage of him as well as one down below by the front wheel. And again, if you've seen some of the footage in the past, uh, you know that those, those shots are pretty damn stable. So to run the eight for the helmet cam and the two sevens for like the bike cameras, that seems to work out really well. Now, another thing that you've probably noticed in some of my other videos is drone footage. This is the Mavic 2 Pro. Again, it's not the, it's not the, the newest, greatest thing that Mavic or that DJI offers, but it is a spectacular drone and it does fold up very small. Not as small as like the Air or anything like that, but I will tell you when it comes to video quality, it is better than the Air, the Air 2, the Spark or any of the other ones out there. And then you can see it does fold up pretty dang small. Now, what I do use, this case here to carry it on the bike to keep it from getting damaged and I'll either put this in my backpack or just somewhere on the tail of the motorcycle so that way when the bike falls over it's going to be somewhere that's not going to get damaged. I don't like carrying backpacks all that much especially on long trips because it just eventually your shoulders get tired but um, the backpack for me is pretty much the safest space for it unless I'm doing something super gnarly and I'm going to fall off the bike then I usually put it on the tail of the bike but the, Go the, the DJI Mavic 2 is an awesome drone. I will say that I am on the waiting list right now for the Skydio 2 because the follow capability on that drone is just amazing. Um, the follow capability on the uh, Mavic Pro 2 is not that great and I'll, I'll go as far as to say that it sucks. Um, so I'm really excited about the Skydio 2, but the whole COVID pandemic has really put a uh, delay on production. So I was supposed to get it in June, and now I think they're talking somewhere around September. So look for that footage coming out whenever I get that drone. I was really hoping to get this footage for, or get that for footage for the Idaho BDR that I'm doing, uh, probably right now when this video is released. But um, 
we again because of the pandemic i had to wait for it so no big deal we'll just go with what we got so again gopro 8 gopro 7 those are my main cameras and again the really the, the main reason i use these cameras is because they're small right they're super small durable waterproof you don't have to worry about extra cases things like that um, speaking of those or speaking of cases one thing that i do um, use is the skeleton case for the GoPro 7s. The, the 7s go in there and uh, they're you know kind of protected on the edges but it also has uh, you know, obviously your mounting point for mounting the GoPro 7s. The GoPro 8 has built-in uh, mounting on it so you don't need to have a skeleton case or anything like that but um, one thing I do use on the GoPro 8 is what they call a media mod. Now this media mod is pretty sweet because um, if you're going to do any vlogging, um, you know, if you're familiar with GoPro, you have to plug in this like microphone dongle thing and it's just cumbersome and is in the way. So what I've like, what I like to do is take this media mod, you plug your camera into it, and then you have the capability of plugging in just a regular old 3.5 millimeter microphone like this microphone here on, on, my, on this lavalier mic here, um, into the into this media mod so you have audio inside the helmet and it's very clear. Another thing cool about this is it has a front speaker, a side speaker, and a rear speaker, um, and you can either switch from front, side, or rear or have all three for a stereo sound. So if you're doing any kind of interviewing or in the past I've done some gear reviews while out on the trail, this media mod is an excellent microphone for doing um, uh, videos like that. And um, I like it because you don't always have to carry an extra microphone because it has the built-in microphones that are way better than the built-in microphones on the GoPro 8 or the GoPro 7. I do carry a, uh, a three battery charger as well, so you can charge multiple batteries at once. But moving on to the next thing, uh, these pieces of foam here, you're probably thinking, what the heck are these? Now. The GoPros are awesome, but a lot of times you can still get wind noise, even when you have the wind option turned off on or on on the camera to help prevent wind noise. So I have found that these, uh, we'll call them little foam condoms that go on the camera are spectacular for really getting rid of nearly all the wind noise. You just slip it on it's pretty low profile and what it does is it covers all of the microphones and gives you a little wind sock and you still have your access to your mounting point down below but this has worked out if you saw my video where i went from canada to mexico i really fought wind noise the entire time on that video and that was pretty disappointing because that video and in, in my opinion could have been way better with better audio um, but after that, I found these and my videos after, after that video have been way better as far as wind noise goes. So I highly suggest if you want to do um, helmet footage or even bike footage and you're going to be driving more than five miles an hour, you're going to want to get some of these wind socks for your GoPros. It doesn't make it much bulkier and it honestly kind of protects it a little bit more too. It's got some, like a, again, like a foam bumper on it, but... Uh, pretty inexpensive. You can get a two pack of these for like $11 and uh, it really makes a huge difference on the wind noise. You make them for the, they also make them for the GoPro 8 and the GoPro 7. So it really the GoPro 7 one will fit 5, 6, and 7. So whichever GoPro you have, they, they have a wind sock for that. So another thing I'd like to show you is uh, something I like to use around camp. Whenever I'm making some videos at camp or really just whenever, you know, we're off the bike is this Osmo gimbal. You're probably thinking if you're not familiar with it, what the hell is that thing? Um, this gimbal is pretty sweet. If you take your, you can take your phone, place it in the gimbal. May not work with this case right now. Turn it on. And it basically self balances your phone. Now, this makes for incredibly stable footage um, when doing any kind of vlogging or anything like that around camp. Um, another thing cool about it is it comes with this tripod that screws on the bottom of it to where you can set this down. And if I'm gonna film myself, I can make it to where it follows me. I can highlight myself, hit start, 
and no matter where I move, it will follow me in or keep me in the center of the frame, which is pretty dang nifty. But um, this isn't something that I carry every single time, but on a long trip like the Idaho BDR, where I will have a lot of footage around camp, I do like to carry this just simply because it's it's a like having a built-in cameraman for you and the, the, the footage is incredibly stable. Uh, also, it does really good time lapse um, for, for footage with your phone. So the DJI Osmo 3 is pretty sweet, very compact. It folds up in this little carry case here and again, you have your little tripod that can just kind of go in the back. Set this aside. So let's talk about camera storage. In all of my cameras, I use a 256 gigabyte uh, SD card. That way throughout the day, I never run out of storage or I mean, if you do, then you are recording probably way too much. But um, I do have 256 cards in these and I also have backup cards just in case for whatever reason, um, you know, they were to get the, fire, the files on there were to get corrupted or whatever and you have any issues, but I do carry some backup cards as well. And then I carry a, um, a, a SSD hard drive. Now, reason I carry this is because, yes, the 256 uh, cards are a lot of storage, but I like to dump them onto um, an SSD drive every night at camp just to make sure if anything were to happen, I lose the camera or whatever else, I at least get to have the footage. Um, this, my passport SSD wireless is awesome. Now. One of the coolest things about it is one is it's really lightweight. It's an SSD drive, not an actual hard drive. I used to have a hard drive version of this and I was always worried that the hard drive was just gonna get bumped around too much and it was gonna fail. Now the SSD drive, SSD drive you don't really have to worry about that too much. Um, it does have this rubber bumper on it. I'll go ahead and take this off just to kind of show you what it looks like without it. But it's very thin lightweight um, and one of the coolest things about it is when you turn it on you get your battery indicator here it has its own wi-fi signal now why is that important well i can take my phone and i can drop any files i had from my phone onto there i can share files off of this to other people so say i had some footage uh, throughout the day that i wanted to share to a writing buddy they can pull the footage off of that onto their phone or to their storage device and vice versa. And then one of the best things about it is I can take um, a memory card, I can plug it into the port right here. And as soon as I plug it in, it starts automatically transferring onto the drive. You, nothing else you have to do to it. Just simply plug it in. Since this one was empty, it flashed once, all four are full and it's done. So again, what's cool about this is it automatically does it. It doesn't repeat any files. It automatically knows what files you've already put on there. So you get, you know, get one for 25%, two for 50, 75, and so on. When it's done, um, it all, all four LEDs are indicated and um, the file is, is transferred all the way. So I like to load all of my footage onto this drive every night. That way, I've got it backed up. And again, I don't delete it off of this until my card is just completely full. Um, that way I've got it in two different spots. God forbid that I you know, lose one of my cameras or my hard drive, I've, I've got it all backed up. So that is it for what I carry on the bike. Another bonus with this is that it's got its own built-in battery and you can actually charge your other devices with this device. So if you needed to charge cameras or you need to charge your cell phone or whatever else, you can actually charge other devices with this built-in battery pack that comes in with this. The battery lasts forever too. I think it's somewhere around like 12 hours of runtime and you're never using it that much. You're using it for maybe 30 minutes a time. So the battery pretty much lasts the entire trip. So really awesome thing about this. The downside to these uh, my passport wireless pros is that they aren't cheap. Now, uh, I think the two terabyte version is somewhere around $500. I will say though, I found this brand new, but open box on eBay for 299, which is an amazing price for this. That being said, if you just keep an eye out, a lot of times you can find deals on these for a lot cheaper than what regular retail price is. There are other options out there similar to this, but none of which that I have found that have the wireless capability built into them to where you can stream files to other devices. So 
uh, I really highly recommend this Maya Passport wireless SSD. Okay, so that's pretty much all the equipment I carry while out on rides. So um, all of this together weighs about six pounds. Um, I, oh, real quick, stand by. Almost forgot, tripods, very important. If you're doing any still shots or doing anything around camp, tripods are very important. I carry two. Um, why do I carry two? Well, one, you want, I have multiple cameras and sometimes I want multiple angles. Pretty much that's one of the main reasons. Um, I carry two, one is a, uh, this one's a Photo Pro. It's a very inexpensive one off of Amazon. I'll try to find the link for that and show it down below. This one's nice because it, it is very bendy. It's got rubber on it and you can wrap it around tree limbs or rocks or pretty much anything. And then it comes with this movable head on top of it. I wanna say this is somewhere around $15. Um, a really neat uh, tripod. Uh, my, my only nitpick with it is that the rubber on it is, very, is, is so bendy that it does like to bounce a lot. If you're trying to get really still shots, say for um, time lapses, stuff like that, then this is not necessarily the best one. Uh, the next thing I carry is a Gorillapod. This also comes with a really sturdy um, ball head on it, but I am using it on a camera up here right now. But uh, this, is, uh, this is my favorite tripod. It's all aluminum, still lightweight, but has all these rubber ridges on it. And you can pretty much grab just about anything. I've used this in studio quite a bit as well. Now, let's talk about studio. So you've probably noticed this behind me is a garage door and not even like a real garage door. Let me switch to my phone here and I'll show you what my setup is. Okay, so this is my studio. It is a 12 by 24 garage that I have outside the, you know, the outside my house. And this is where I work on my motorcycle. I have a little workbench here. I have um, another bike here. And also where I do all of my video stuff here. So I've got, I use two cameras. I have two M50s. These are Canon M50s. And the reason I like these cameras is because one, they're small, they're compact, they're very inexpensive. I think I got these both at Costco and um, the color on them is amazing and the autofocus is really, really good. So that's why I use these Canon M50s. As far as microphones goes, I use this uh, Rode Video Micro and then I also use the Rode uh, wireless microphone that I also have here that goes through my microphone on my shirt and I like to sync these together, then the audio quality is, in my opinion, is really good. Another thing that I recently just picked up uh, with some donations that you guys have made is this, um, this slider. This is really neat because if you'll see here, it'll do some panning and sliding. It's motorized. Um, just a really cool thing for uh, making nice shots when doing uh, photo or doing product footage and stuff like that. So yeah, that's, this is my studio right here pretty much. And then I just use these fluorescent lights around here for all my lighting. Um, I have other lights that I use, um, but I've had this equipment for a while, mainly because uh, I've done some other video stuff. My wife also has a YouTube channel that I shoot some stuff for her and do some editing, but that's, this is the studio. Okay, so that's pretty much all the camera gear I use. This is the stuff I use when on the trail, and what I just showed you is what I use inside of my garage studio here. So if you have any questions about this stuff, definitely hit me in the comments below. I can talk about this stuff for days, but I wanna keep this video kind of short because it doesn't necessarily interest everybody, but I also just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes of what goes on. Uh, while filming in here in the garage and also how I film some stuff out on the trail. So again, if you have any questions, let me know below. I'll leave as many links to any of these things that I have down below in the description. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up as well as make sure and hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you know when videos like this are released. I know I say that every time, but the bell icon is very important because you can be a subscriber and not know that I put out a video unless you hit that notification button. So please go ahead and do that. Also, do me a favor, share this video with your friends. 
And if, again, if you have any questions, definitely feel free to ask. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you next time.